if a person lives a riotously disobedient life and confesses Christ at the last moment, just before they die, will they enjoy the same blessings in eternity as someone who's faithfully served Jesus all their lives? Well, yes and no. Such a person will, in fact, enjoy eternal blessedness. And in fact, we have a crystal clear example of just this happening in the gospel accounts, where Jesus, even while he is being crucified, while he is on the cross, you'll recall that uh, one of the thieves began to mock Jesus and the other thief rebuked him and said, this man's not done anything wrong. We're guilty. We deserve this. But this man's done nothing wrong. And then he says to Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus replies, assuredly, I say to you today, you will be with me in paradise. Yes, in paradise. So why would I say no to the question? Well, because paradise is, for want of a better word, not flat. It's not a plane. There are higher places and lower places, and that has everything to do with God being pleased to bless us and reward us for the things that we have done. Now, we need to be very careful here and remember, first of all, that we get into heaven, not by our obedience, not by our works, but by the life and death of Jesus Christ that not only are our sins imputed to him on the cross, but his obedient life is imputed to us. That's why I like to say when someone passes away, male or female, and I know that they were a believer, I say they have gone on to his reward. And by his, I don't mean the guy who died or hers, the girl who died. It's always his reward because it's Jesus's reward. We inherit what he inherits. We're joint heirs with him. But the Bible seems to be abundantly clear that there are, in a manner of speaking, levels of heaven, levels of blessedness, while at the same time being clear that there is no sorrow in heaven. The fellow who makes it in by the skin of his teeth, whether it's the thief on the cross or me or you, has only joy in heaven. And the person, again, who's lived this faithful life and suffered diligently and been honored with a martyr's death, that person will also know only joy. But it will be a fuller, deeper joy. One of the ways uh, that we sometimes describe this is we, we look at that joy, that heavenly joy, as uh, water in a cup. And everybody in heaven has a full cup, but everyone in heaven has a different sized cup so that perhaps the thief on the cross in paradise with no suffering, with no hardship, no tears, no sin, he's got a cup the size of a thimble. And some other person who's maybe got saved somewhere along the line well before they died and who did a lot of bad things early and then turned their lives around. Maybe they have a, you know, a good sized coffee mug that's full. And maybe a great hero of the faith has a 55 gallon drum that's full. And maybe the great hero of the faith, who's a great hero of the faith, but we never heard of, because that's where the great and true heroes are. Maybe they have a swimming pool full of water. And maybe, just maybe, all of them will increase over time their capacity for that joy. And I want to suggest to you that that joy is an increasing capacity to take in the glory of God. Doesn't that sound like something that would be unalloyed and pure, no matter how small a serving, but that would be glorious as the serving size increases. 
we will know God more and more as time progresses. And it may very well be that by this time, the thief on the cross has got a 55-gallon drum. I do know this. We will all rejoice. We will all give thanks. We will all confess that we're only there because of what Jesus did for us. But we will also enjoy relative blessings based on what Jesus did through us.